Ladies and gentlemen, the reason you're probably watching this video is probably for the exact same reason I'm filming it. And it's also probably because you want to know how to build one of these. Before I actually teach you how to build one of these, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Connor Smith. I'm 17 years old and I'm from Aurora, Nebraska. As you can tell though, it's always windy in Nebraska. It's just a common thing here every single day. There's a good possibility that some of you may have seen some of my work on TikTok. I have my own personal account that I'll put right here. I also run an organization based out of Aurora that's called Aurora Flag Friday, and I'll put the TikTok right here. As the leader of Flag Friday, I can probably say that it is our mission every single day to support our past troops and current veterans in the military right now. Now to get back to the point of the video, these things right behind me, I have currently made all myself. Most of these flagpole rigs, as I call them, have been made in my shop or in welding shop at the school. It's taken me several hours to build either one of these things, and I cherish them very much. Building these things does not cost me very much money, but it does cost just a little bit. Each one of these flagpole rigs is built to withstand a lot of wind. But more importantly, each of these flagpole rigs is made to show our patriotism to those who deserve it. All right, we are back in my very, very dirty shop, as you can see. But that's okay. We got both, actually all, all the flagpole rigs put back in the shop. All right, so here we got our piece of what I like to call T-frame. Just the two two inch square tubing put together in a T shape. That's all this is right here. I did um, weld and grind this all down at school. I just needed a project for welding shop at school. So I just went ahead and did it there even though I do have a grinder and a welder here. Now the next part to this project would be putting on these pipes like this is right here. So I went to my dad's shop and found some juice. All right, now that we got our inch and a half tubing here, we can start cutting this and getting it ready to mount on here. Now, before we cut this and everything, we obviously can't put this in a truck if it doesn't have a hole for a hitch pin, it would just fall out of the back end of the truck. So what you're gonna wanna do is measure in from the end of your bottom of the T in about two and a half ish inches, two, three, something like that. Play with it depending on what your hitch receiver and how deep it is. So for this next part, we have come to my dad's shop considering that I don't have a drill press in my shop, but that's okay, he lets me come in here and do stuff all the time, it's fine. Now to drill this hole, you're either gonna want a drill press that's really strong, really powerful, gets right through it, or you're gonna want a really strong drill that you can put a drilling bit in or any type of bit that will cut through this strong metal. Now before we keep going, I should mention that this um, hitch receiver is not for my truck. It's actually going to be sold on Facebook Marketplace to just anybody who wants to buy it. But before you drill your hole, you're going to want to know what hitch pin you're going to want to put in this to stop it from coming out. So my recommendation before drilling the hole is find your hitch pin and then find a bit that's about the same size, if not just a hair bigger than your actual hitch pin. Do this so that you know no matter what your hitch pin will fit into the hole you do drill. Now I do recommend starting off with a smaller bit than the actual bit you're going to use to drill the full size hole. Just drill a pilot hole so that this bit does not bounce around or move around crazy all over the place. A few things before we actually drill. I do recommend putting an old crappy piece of wood underneath it just to protect your dr drill press. Another thing is you might want to clamp to clamp down your piece of metal to the table so that it doesn't move around again. So now when I put my piece of metal up here, I, per I recommend holding it down and finding out exactly where you want that bit to go and then continue holding it down while you put your clamp onto the table so you know exactly where you're gonna hit. And the last thing you're gonna do is obviously place a hand back here so this does not drop off at any point if something does go wrong. And then you're ready to drill. And just like that, you got your pilot hole made. Now just flip it over and repeat the process. So now obviously that you have your pilot hole drilled, now you can switch your bit to your bigger bit that is the same size as your hitch pin. Mine's pretty close, mine's just a hair bigger actually, but that's okay. Now you can drill your bigger hole. Now this is the point where you might want some cutting oil or you're just gonna have to go really, really, really slow through it. But whatever works to get through it, just do that. All right, so now we get to the fun part where we actually get to start cutting the inch and a half metal to fit on your base. Now this part's slightly important because obviously if your pole is taller, higher up in the air, whatever it is, you're obviously gonna want more run 
on your base to support that longer pole. So just like on this pole, my center pole is taller, so I made my center holder just a little bit taller than my outsides. Now before you cut, obviously figure out how long you want it to be and where all your markers are gonna go so you know what you have to cut and precisely know what to cut. So before you do anything here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the end that is gonna sit on your base is square so that it stands straight up and down and it's not leaning one way or another. So I recommend taking a speed square or if you have a full size square, it works the same way. Just put it on here at your edge and just make sure everything is square so that you won't be off balance. This is pretty square, so I'm just gonna leave it. And now obviously measure to your desired length and draw a line. Now you're gonna wanna do this on all sides and then use your square to get everything as square and as straight as possible. Now at this point, you're gonna wanna move your square and stuff away and then break out your grinder. Make sure you have a cutting disc. Uh, maybe some of you guys also have like metal band saws or big giant um, cross cut saws for metal. Um, I currently don't have one of those, so I have to use a grinder. It is what it is. Now obviously cutting metal with a grinder or anything like that, it's gonna cause sparks, so make sure you're away from like gas cans and stuff like that. Now this is the point where I would say, definitely put some safety glasses on for this, and I would definitely get yourself um, a pair of welding gloves or just work gloves to protect your hands. Disc may blow up, something like that. You always wanna be protected. Another thing is you might want a welding helmet or just a face shield of some kind. I don't usually wear it, but you might want it just in terms of if something were to go wrong or something were to blow up on you. Now obviously at this point, it's all at your terms, it's all at your hands. Whatever you feel comfortable with cutting, whatever you're cutting with, go ahead and cut. Make sure your cords are out of the way too so you don't cut those. Now, depending on how picky you are or how exact you want to be, you can grind this off, make it 100% square, do what you need to do, because if you cut it with a grinder like me, it's probably not going to be square. All right, so for this next part, I recommend going to a higher bench where you can get more accurate measurements, where you can see a little better, maybe some better light, whatever it is that you can perform better in that area. Now, the next thing is we have to decide where we are going to put our pipes on here. Me, if you're building one like I am, where it's short and small, I recommend putting one on each end just to get the flags separated apart from each other. Now, we're obviously gonna wanna make sure that these pipes get the best weld possible and have the most support wherever we decide to put them, so go based off of that too. If you're building your project exactly like how I am, I recommend going to one edge and coming in about a half inch, three quarters of an inch, whatever fits your fancy, go in about that far so that you get a good weld out here on the edge. And then I recommend drawing a line with your square so you know exactly where it's gonna go. Now next, obviously you're gonna wanna put this pipe right in the middle so you have an equal on either side and you're just gonna kinda figure it out where it goes. You can measure two if you want or you can just kinda eyeball it and just kinda figure it out. I recommend drawing another line so you know where that's gonna go too. So now you have your box where your um, pipe is gonna go. Now just repeat the process over here and so you get the same thing. So I did also go ahead and grind down the ends of these two um, pipes so that we get a better weld there and better connection. Just makes it a better weld, stronger weld, the whole nine yards. Anyway, back to me. The um, wind that we had earlier here in good old windy Nebraska is just gone. Literally within two hours, went from 25 mile an hour winds to literally flat zero. So right now, it's actually really nice outside, about 53 degrees-ish, zero wind, really nice. On the other hand, the fam's calling me, saying the grub's ready, so we're gonna go eat, and then we're gonna get back to it. Alrighty, the grub has been eaten and devoured. We are back to the shop. I got some levels, um, one's a torpedo level, one's a little bit longer, that's all I could find. But now we're gonna use those in the next part of this project. All right, I doubt you can see my face right now, but um, to place this in place, I have um, got my levels and I got my speed square also. This may help you. Speed square, normal square, framing square, whatever it is, a square could possibly help you in this situation. A level is probably more reliable 
but a speed square does work too. Now, in order to start this, you're probably gonna wanna find a super level place on the floor, or maybe you got a table that's super level. Find a place that's really, really level, and that'll work. If not, a framing square is actually, will fit in this area perfectly, because obviously a 90 degree is um, straight up and down from what this would be. It just works out perfectly. Now, when I place this, obviously I'm gonna wanna place it on those lines we drew earlier, the three quarter inch set in and then center it on the two inch standard square. It'll just work out better, make the whole thing balanced. It won't be leaning one way or another when you put it in a truck. Now, once you got your pipe set square on the lines where you want it, make sure it's completely level and everything's set right. You're gonna wanna make sure your negative is obviously hooked up to your pipe so that you have a connection with your welder. Make sure everything's square and set up perfectly. Get everything level, just the way you want it. And then for now, just tack weld. Now at this point, you can either obviously go ahead and just finish welding this one, or you can come to your other side and tack weld that down and see how both of them set perfectly right where you want them. Then you can just weld all at one time. That's completely up to you. That's a personal standpoint for whoever wants to do it their way. On the other hand though, I did just tack weld both of them up and then went through and welded them completely together at the same time. Um, doesn't look too bad actually, it looks pretty good. The light isn't very good out here, but for a welder brand that no one's ever heard of, the welds are actually fairly decent. I mean, it's nothing like a Miller or anything else would do, but for a welder that literally plugs into your wall socket, I mean, it's pretty good actually. But I think for this video, I'm going to leave this video off right here. If you guys do want to see how you do put poles on a flag rig like this and how that all works, um, like this video and comment. Um, if you have any questions about how this works or need, per se, more detail on how to do one thing or another, drop a comment on that too. I will try to answer. If it's too detailed, I'll just make a whole video on it and so I can get your questions answered because I know people who want to build these things have questions. I had several questions when I first built my first one. Um, this one over here, this was actually my very first one I ever built. It was built on a time crunch and could have been way better. But if you do have questions, drop them in the comments. Like this video if you guys want me to um, teach you guys how to put poles on a base. It's a long process, just like building the base, but it's fairly simple. I can teach it really quick. Um, subscribe if you want to keep watching how this journey progresses. I'll teach you guys how to build a ton of other kind of flagpole rigs too. I have several others that I don't have in the shop right now that I can also teach you guys how to build. Um, so if you want to see how those are built, um, subscribe so you don't miss a video on how to build those. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next part if you guys want it.